Das ist ein Papier. Das ist ein Papier. Unser himmlischer Vater, ich werde dir danken für diesen neuen Morgen. Oh, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this morning. Und dass wir hier sein können und dein Wort studieren können. And that we can be here and study your word. Und bitte segne uns auch jetzt und leuchte unseren Verstand. And please uh, bless us now and enlighten our minds. Hilf uns, dass wir heute einfach viele Prinzipien lernen können für unseren Alltag. And please help us uh, to learn many principles for our everyday life. Und das möchte ich bitten in Jesu Namen. And I want to ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, the notes are in the live stream. Also die Notizen sind im live stream. Um, okay, this morning I just want to go over a principle. Und heute Morgen möchte ich, dass wir uns ein Prinzip anschauen. Because there's been some... Uh, let's, let's just say, Satan is going to try to get us to doubt our past experience, right? Und Satan möchte ja, dass wir zweifeln, also unsere vergangene Erfahrung. That it wasn't really God that let us out, it was just these things that we were teaching were wrong, right? Er möchte, dass wir denken, es war nicht wirklich Gott, der uns geführt hat und dass die Dinge, die wir gelehrt haben, falsch waren. And my experience is when I, I look back on all those things that we've been understanding, all the principles have been correct, we've put them in the right place based upon the structure that we had. Meine Erfahrung ist, dass all das, was wir halt damals gepredigt haben, also all die Prinzipien, sie waren eigentlich richtig und basierend auf der Struktur, die wir hatten, waren sie richtig platziert. And we're just coming to realize now that those things are in exact same place, but just in smaller, in a smaller fractal. And, and the Lord has shown us the same pattern over and over again, right? Und was wir einfach erkannt haben, ist, dass die Dinge, sie sind ja auf demselben Platz, nur auf einem kleineren Fraktal und der Herr zeigt eben diese Dinge immer immer wieder. Okay, this is this wheels within the wheels, right? Also das sind diese Räder in den Rädern. But the, the principle that I want to look at this morning is about the fourth. Und das Prinzip, was ich mir heute Morgen anschauen möchte mit euch, ist das vierte. So we'll go through this and then I'll, I want to make some conclusions from it. Und wir werden da durchgehen und dann werde ich einige Schlussfolgerungen davon machen. Okay, so it's one quote if we go to that from... Book of Education. Also da ist das erste Zitat vom Buch Erziehung. So just one, there is only one quote. Yeah. Okay. Also da ist nur ein Zitat. Okay. It says, The history which the great I am has marked out in his word united link after link in the prophetic chain from eternity in the past to an eternity in the future tells us where we are today in the procession of ages and that what may be expected in the time to come. So what's the purpose of history? Also, was ist der Zweck der Geschichte? Yes, to, to tell us where we are and, and what's going to come in front of us, right? Also, um uns zu sagen, wo wir sind und was kommt in der Zukunft. Because God doesn't change in the, the, it's a more sure word of prophecy, right? Und Gott ändert sich ja nicht und es ist ein umso sicheres Wort der Prophetie. So, he, he's given us these patterns to know exactly where we are and what's going to come. Also er gibt uns diese Muster, damit wir genau wissen, wo wir sind und was kommt. All that prophecy has foretold as coming to pass until the present time has been traced on the pages of history. And we may be assured that all which is yet to come will be fulfilled in its order. So everything has an order of things, right? Also alles hat eine Reihenfolge. Okay. So it says that the final overthrow of all earthly dominions is plainly foretold in the word of truth, in the prophecy uttered when sentence from God was pronounced upon the last king of Israel is given the message. Thus saith the Lord God, remove the diadem, take off the crown, exalt him that is low, abase him that is high, I will overturn, 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 and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is. So where do we see the final overthrow of all earthly dominions? Also wo sehen wir diesen finalen Umsturz aller 
irdischen Mächte. From what we've just read. Also von dem, was wir gerade gelesen haben. Ezekiel 21, right? In Ezekiel 21. It talks about the final overthrow and then it says, I will overturn, overturn, overturn. So there's the final overthrow, right? Also es spricht von dem endgültigen Umsturz und dann sagt es, ich will umstoßen, umstoßen, umstoßen. It takes you right up until Christ's second coming, right? Und das bringt dich dann genau bis zum zweiten Kommen Christi. Amen? Amen. And so then, we, we have, so we now, we're given a structure for the final overthrow of earthly kingdoms, right? Also uns ist nur eine Struktur gegeben für diesen finalen Umsturz aller irdischen Herrschaften. And it goes on, it says, the crown removed from Israel passed successively to um, the kingdoms of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome. God says, it shall be no more until he come was right at it. So you just bring those two lines together and you have the final overthrow of earthly kingdoms, right? Also man bringt diese zwei also setzt es zueinander und dann hat man diesen finalen Umsturz. So, we, when we put it on a line, we have Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, the fourth, is during the seven last plagues, takes you up to when Christ comes, right? Also auf der Linie haben wir dann Babylon, Medo-Persia, Griechenland und Rom ist dann in den letzten sieben Plagen, bis eben Christus kommt. Second coming. Amen? Na, na, nice and simple, right? It says, and then it goes, it says, that time is at hand. Today the signs of the times declare that we are standing on the threshold of great and solemn events. Everything in our world is in agitation. Before our eyes is fulfilling the Savior's prophecy of the events to precede his coming, right? The events to precede his coming are the two times of trouble, right? Und diese Ereignisse, die vor Christi kommen, sind, sind eben diese zwei Zeiten der Trübsal. On the big fractal, it's the Sunday law crisis followed by the seven last plagues, right? Und auf dem großen Fraktal ist das Sonntagsgesetzkrise gefolgt von den sieben letzten Plagen. Because Sister White says, Uh, this time of trouble is not the time of trouble with the seven last plagues of order, but a, a trouble that's a short while before, right? So the two times of trouble are split into three, followed by the fourth, right? Also diese zwei Zeiten der Trübsal, sie sind aufgeteilt in drei und dem vierten. And when I say three, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, right? And Rome is the fourth. This is split into these two parts, right? Also, wenn ich drei meine, dann meine ich also Babylon, Medo-Persia, Griechenland ist dann ersten und Rom dann das vierte beim zweit, bei der zweiten. Okay, so she says, before our eyes is fulfilling the Savior's prophecy of the events to precede his coming. He shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. So, it's the beginning of sorrows, right? Und das ist eben dieser Anfang der, der Wien. And the sorrows is beginning of what? Und diese Wehen sind der Anfang von was? The, the birth pangs, right? Also von den Geburtswegen. And it, so from this, it's going to lead you right down to this, right? There's where the birth pangs finish and you have the final product. Also von da bringt es dich dann eben bis hierhin und das ist wo diese Geburtswehen enden und man dann ja das finale Ergebnis hat. Right, because this is the resurrection. Und das ist ja auch diese Auferstehung. And the resurrection, what, what is it? Und was ist die Auferstehung? Right. It's a birth, right? Es ist eine Geburt. So, these two times of trouble is designed to get you to this point where you're, you're resurrected from your sinful condition, right? Also diese in, zwei, in principle. Diese zwei Zeiten der Trübsal, also die sind dafür gemacht, dass du eben dann 
diese Geburt, also diese Auferstehung am Ende haben kannst. Okay, we'll see why that's important when we go through. So go to, now go to Daniel chapter 7. Wir gehen jetzt zu Daniel 7. Vers 1. In Vers 1. It says, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed, and he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea. So these four great beasts are the same four kingdoms that we've just uh, mentioned in the book of education, right? Also diese vier großen Tiere, die sind dieselben, so wie eben im Buch Erziehung erwähnt wurde. Okay, but if you were to continue reading in the book of education, it says that the Lord is holding back the four winds, right? Und wenn man im Buch Erziehung weiterliest, dann sagt es, der Herr hält diese vier Winde noch zurück. Okay, so technically, when they make a Sunday law, the seven last plagues should, should begin to pour out, right? Also wenn sie das Sonntagsgesetz machen, sollten ja eigentlich schon die sieben letzten Plagen ausgegossen werden. But the Lord holds the winds until the servants of God are sealed in their forehead, right? Aber der Herr hält die Winde, bis eben die Rechte über das versiegelt sind auf der Stirn. Okay, so it says, the, Behold, four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another. And if we go to verse 7, Und wenn wir zu Vers 7 gehen, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. So what's been, what's been um, highlighted here in these verses? Also what is here besonders hervorgehoben in diesen Versen? No, not what I've highlighted. I'm asking what is being highlighted by the Bible. Also durch die Bibel, was wird besonders hervorgehoben? The, the fourth, right? Das vierte. Behold a fourth beast, right? Also es sagt, siehe ein viertes Tier. And it goes on to say in verse 8. Und in Vers 8. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold... In his horn were the eyes like the eyes of a man, and the man was speaking great things. So, this is this two-horned power. The fourth is Rome, and the papacy, this combination of church and state, right? Also, das, diese zweihörnige Macht, also, stehen das Rom und diese, ähm, ja, diese Papsttum, das eben Kirche und Staat. Okay, now go to verse 17. Und jetzt gehen wir zu Vers 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the what? Which beast? The fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others. So the Bible is specifically highlighting the fourth, right? And the Bible, she hebt wieder im besonders dieses vierte hervor. Exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows, I beheld the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So, in a perfect sense, it's just taking you down to the same point, right? Also, in perfekten Sinne bringt es einen dann zum selben Punkt herab. However, we know that this point is marking the investigative judgment of the living, the, the end of the investigative judgment of the living, right? Wie auch immer, wir wissen ja, dass... Das markiert eben auch dieses Ende des Untersuchungsgerichtes an den Lebenden. Okay. And we, we also know that the, this seventh plague is prefigured here. We've been looking at this, right, about the, 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 the plagues, how they're, um, you know, at, at different levels, all the way coming down within the structure, right? Und wir wissen auch, dass die siebte Plage eben hier 
typifiziert ist. Und wir haben uns das ja angeschaut, diese sieben Plagen, wie sie eben in diesen Fraktalen sind. Okay, so, just to keep it simple, right, it brings you to this point here, right? Also, um es einfach zu halten, es bringt einen zu diesem Punkt hier. Right, so, you, you, you would, these would be the two times of trouble in the Sunday law. Also, das wären diese zwei Zeiten der Trübsal im Sonntagsgesetz. So, you, you would have the, the lion, the bear, followed by the leopard. And then you have the fourth, right, which is this... Um, Yes, this dragon is the fourth beast, right? And it brings you to this this point where he says it is done. Also man hat dann diesen Löwen, den Bären, Leopard, Drachen, das bringt einen zu diesem Punkt, wo er dann sagt, also es ist getan. And right at this point, the point that gets cut short is where this fourth beast is getting punished. Und zu diesem Punkt, wo diese Zeit verkürzt wird, ist es, wo eben dieses Tier bestraft wird. Okay, so it says study the seventh plague. And we've been looking much at the seventh plague, right? Und er sagt ja auch, studiert die siebte Plage. Und wir haben uns ja die siebte Plage schon sehr viel angeschaut. And what pours out in this time period? Und was wird hier ausgegossen in dieser Zeit? No, that's true, that's what you said, that's getting punished. But what else pours out there? The, the former and the latter rain, right? Also der Früh und der Spätregen. So, what is the former and the latter rain? What, in another term, what is it? Also ein anderer Ausdruck für den Früh und den Spätregen. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a terrible question. Uh, and, okay, so when you look down here at the bigger fractal, what's the former and the latter rain? Also hier am größeren Fraktal, was ist der Früh und der Spätregen? Hm. The, the birth, right? When, so it's marking this point where, when you, because uh, Ezekiel 37 talks about the, just, just go to Ezekiel 37. Um, Verse 9. Verse 9. So prior to this, there's no breath in them. Also vor dem ist kein Atem in ihnen. And the breath is the hot coal that touches your lips. Right? Und der Atem ist ja diese heiße Kohle, die deine Lippen berührt. V verse 9, it says. Also Verse 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may what? Live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. But when you go to verse 11 and 12, it just repeats it, but it gives you in different language. Right? Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will what? Open your graves and cause you to come up of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. So what's the breath? Also was ist dieser Odem? It's the resurrection, right? It's the Auferstehung. Okay. So, right here, right, is the resurrection is the, the new birth, right? And the Auferstehung is the new Geburt. So you have the birth pangs lead you down to the birth, right? Also man hat wieder diese Geburtswehen, die einen zur Geburt führen. And um, Lawrence was putting in place this thing, right? You have the six years, you're in bondage, and the seventh, at the end of the sixth year, you're not to work anymore, you, you, you're, you're freed from your labors, but at the end of the seventh year, you're set free, right? So you're, although you're finish your captive, there's something about the seventh plague, right? And at the end, that's where you're set free. Und Frau Lorenz hat das ja auch schon am Platz gesetzt. Also in diesen sechs Jahren musst du ja arbeiten. 
und dann wirst du, also musst du eben, hörst du auf zu arbeiten und dann wirst du aber erst hier dann freigesetzt und da ist eben etwas Besonderes über dieses siebte Jahr. Okay, and marks the point where Christ comes, right? In the reform line marked by this divine symbol coming down, lightning comes down from heaven and in the end of the seventh plague it marks the point where, where, where Christ comes, right? Und das markiert eben dieses Kommen Christi, also wenn dieser Engel herabkommt oder diese Blitz herabkommt und bei der siebten Plage natürlich das zweite Kommen dann. Okay, and the point I just want you to, to, to see from that, the fourth goes all the way to the end, right? Und das vierte, das geht bis zum Ende. So, what's, a, what's the fourth? Und was ist das vierte? And, oh, okay, that's just an obscure question. I'm trying to get the point, right? If there's, is there anything that comes after four? Also kommt etwas nach last. vier. Sorry? The last. The fourth is the last. The, the, okay, the fourth is the last. Yes. No, I, well, I asked the question, what comes yeah, okay, after? Has, yeah. Okay, so your question was, your answer was not in relation to the question, but that's okay. It's the right answer. Also das it's the last, right? Okay, so when you understand the fourth, it wouldn't be improper to call it the last, right? Sorry? When you understand the fourth, it wouldn't be improper to call it the last. Also, wenn man das vierte versteht, dann wäre das nicht falsch, es das letzte zu nennen. Right? Richtig? You don't look so convi convinced, Sister Manuel. No, my problem is uh, Trump was the fourth. Okay, we'll, we'll come to it. We'll not mention Trump yet. But the point is that the prophetic narrative says that the fourth is the last. Yes. Right? That's what I'm asking. Right? Also, the prophetic Erzählung sagt uns, dass das vierte das letzte ist. Okay. So, um, now go to Revelation 13. And let's go to Offenbarung 13. And verse 1. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now, Sister White clearly tells us that this is the papacy, right? And she rules for 1260. And Schwester White sagt uns ganz klar, dass das das Papsttum ist, und es herrscht für 1260. And it's the exact same time period that's marked in Matthew 24, right? When you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, right? Marks the beginning of the 1260. Yes? Richtig. Okay. So... <coughs> It says, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. So when did it receive the deadly wound? Also, wann hat es die Historically. Also, geschichtlich. At the end of the 1260, right? Also 1798, das Ende der 1260. Okay, so this history here in these three verses is a parallel history to the history of Daniel 7, right? Und diese Geschichte hier in Offenbarung 13 ist eine parallele, also Geschichte zu Daniel 7. So you've got 1260. Also wir haben hier 1260. And this is the parallel to the point that's cut short, right? Yes, because when you read in Matthew 24, the point that's cut short is where the heavens, the, the shaking of the heavens and the earth begins, which is the seventh plague, right? But the deadly wound is at the end, when Christ comes, that's what it's marked. When he comes, he punishes the whore. Right? Die tödliche Wunde, die ist dann am Ende. Also wenn Christus kommt, dann bestraft er diese Hure. Okay, so it says, um, okay, we were going to Revelation 17, verse 1. 
And Revelation 17 is an illustration of the outpouring of the seven last plagues. Right? Und Offenbarung 17 ist eine Darstellung von dieser Ausgießung der sieben letzten Plagen. Vers 1 ist, right? Vers 1. It says, Now there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And she's been punished because, in verse 2, Vers 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So she's been punished because she made all the nations drink of her wine. Right? Okay, and just go to Revelation 18. Wenn wir zu Offenbarung 18 gehen. Verse 1. Vers 1. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen. What's it marking? Und was markiert das? The punishment upon Babylon that we just read in Revelation 17, right? Die Bestrafung über Babylon, was wir eben in Offenbarung 17 gelesen haben. And has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For... All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Right? So at the same time she's been punished, Revelation 18 is marking the latter rain pouring out. Also zu der Zeit, wo sie eben bestraft wird, markiert Offenbarung 18, wo auch der Spätregen ausgegossen wird. Right? It's the birth. Und das ist die Geburt. Yes, the birth and the judgment. These are the two things when you know God, right? So that's the Gericht and the Geburt. Das sind die zwei Dinge, die zwei Dinge, womit du eben Gott kennst. Okay. So um, the point I wanted to make that this is the the twelfth sixty, and it's just it's a parallel. It's bringing you to this the same point, right? And that's even these twelfth sixty, and that's even here to parallel, and that brings you to this point. Right. Brings you down to the judgment. Also, das bringt einen zum Gericht. Okay. Now go to Revelation 13. Und jetzt gehen wir zu Offenbarung 13. Vers 1. Und Vers 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, and ten horns. No, we just read this, didn't we? Okay, excuse me, sorry. Go to Daniel 8. Also, we're going to Daniel 8. <coughs> it says, In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared to me at the first. So he's showing you that Daniel 8 is the same vision as Daniel 7, right? Also er sagt einem, dass Daniel 8 dieselbe Vision so wie Daniel 7 ist. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shusha in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Ulia. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns, and the two horns were high, and one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. So this lion and the bear... Is this two horn power? Also, dieser Löwe und der Bär ist diese zwei Hörner gemacht. Right? It's been through this many times, right? Verse 4. Verse 4. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. But he did according to his will and became great. So, the first four verses are dealing with the first two kingdoms, right? Which is, a, is showing you that it's one kingdom, right? And these first two verses, also, they handle about this, about this one kingdom, what these two creatures are. So, when you get to verse five, which kingdom would it now be dealing with? And in verse five, um, which kingdom handles it sich then? No, I'm not asking that. Uh, what, the, listen to my question. 
Verses 1 to 4 are dealing with the first two kingdoms, so verse 5 is dealing with which kingdom? Also Vers 1 bis 3, 1 bis 4 handelt um diese zwei Königreiche, die ersten zwei. Vers 5 handelt um welches? The, the third kingdom, right? In das dritte Königreich. Okay, that's important, right? And the third kingdom is this, this horn, right? Und das dritte Königreich ist dieses eine Horn. Okay, so, um, and if we bring that down to here, right, it's got, you have the lion, the bear, and then mm, 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 brings you down to, actually it brings you down to, if I remember right, it would bring you down to here, right? Yes, here's where the point, so you would have here the, Excuse my drawings, a bit rudimentary, but we don't really have to. Okay, that will do for now, right? So because the judgment, right, where, because this beast here, in our time period, judged this two-horned beast, right? Und das markiert ja das Gericht, denn dieses Tier, das hat diese zwei Tiere ähm, gerichtet. Okay, something we have to grasp from that, right? But I'm, I, I just, it's the point I want to make, right, that this is the... Okay, technically, which beast is this? Prophetically. Und prophetisch, welches Tier ist dieses hier? Yes. Sorry? No, think about. Also der Norden. Think, look at the biggest. Right, we're, we're all dealing that the title of this thing is a, is called the fourth, right? So technically, which beast is this? The fourth. It's the fourth, right? Und um, technisch ist dieses Tier das vierte. We're not talking about a chronology chronology of numbers here. Um, what I'm saying is historically, this beast is the third, right? Und historisch ist er dieses das. What, what, what comes after the third? Und das kommt nach dem the fourth, right? Das right? Let's read on and then we'll come back to this point, right? Wir dann wir zu dem Punkt. Verse 5. And as I was considering, behold, a he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground, and the he goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns which had been standing before the river and ran in him with the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with color against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver out of his hand. This is this punishment here, right, which is technically prefiguring this punishment here, right? Also, dass diese Bestrafung hier, die was diese Bestrafung hier vorausschattet. Who's being punished here? Und wer wird hier bestraft am Ende? The fourth. The fourth, right. Das vierte. Okay, so. <coughs> prefiguring the punishment upon the fourth, right? Also das hier schaut voraus, diese Bestrafung über das vierte. And it's the third kingdom that's doing it. Und das ist das dritte Königreich, was das tut. Okay, okay. We, you see anyone, right? Let's read on. Wir lesen weiter, Vers 8. Um, and Vers 8. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great towards the south, towards the east, towards the present land. Right, so we know that it's talking about now this time of peace. And Rome... comes out of that <coughs> world system, right? And then it's going to reassert itself right here, right? And um, these four hörner that we have seen, it's the time of peace. And Rome comes then, yeah, out of this system, and it comes then even here, 
Wie der richtig auf. Okay, Vers 10. Vers 10. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven and cast down some of the hosts and the stars the ground and stamped upon them. Yeah, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host and by him the daily uh, sacrifice was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression and it cast down the truth to the ground and it practiced and it prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking and another saint said unto that certain saint speak, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation to give forth the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto 2,300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And the 2,300, right, as we've looked at, is a parallel to the 1260, right? Und die 2300, das haben wir uns schon angeschaut, ist eine Parallele zu der 1260. Because it brings you to which time? Appointed. The time appointed, right? Zu bestimmten Zeit. Okay. So, <coughs> the point I, I want to make here is that we see that you've got this Little horn, Rome, becomes the army of the other little horn, Papal Rome, right? You have this two horned power there. Also, we have this little horn, which then to this army wird from the other little horn, also Rome from this Papst. Which is the fourth, right? And that makes even this fourth out. But what I'm saying is this fourth kingdom here, this because the midnight cry is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven plagues, right? Und das sind ja auch die sieben Plagen. It's just a smaller fractal, right? Und das ist nur in einem kleineren Fraktal. And the seven plagues is marked in Matthew 24, verse 15, by what? Die sieben Plagen sind um, markiert durch Matthew, uh, Matthew 24. Yeah, Matthew 24, verse 15. Uh, durch Matthäus 24, verse 15. <laughs> The abomination of desolation, right? As dieses Gräuel der Verwüstung. And just in the bigger, the bigger 1260, right? That's the abomination of desolation. So that's the fourth, right? Und Same two-horned power. In dem größeren Fraktal ist eben das hier das Gräuel der Verwüstung. Also ist das hier das vierte. Okay, this two-horned power is just the beginning, and it's just same two-horned power that comes back up here, right? Also das, diese zweihörige Macht hier ist nur, ja, dieser Anfang, und das kommt eben hier wieder auf. So it's about what I want you to get about it's the third and the fourth. Also es geht um dieses dritte und das vierte. Right? The third punishes the fourth. Und das dritte bestraft das vierte. Okay. So uh, let's go to Daniel 11. Jetzt gehen wir zu Daniel 11. Okay. So uh, Here, the midnight cry was marked here in our line by 2016, which we were positive that this was the midnight cry, right? And midnight cry was also marked in our line by 2016, and that's what we always understood, that this is the midnight cry. Okay, so if you were just to take, now remember that this fractal here is a parallel to this fractal, right? Dieses Fraktal hier ist ja eine Parallele zu dem Fraktal. So, so right here at this point, the dragon is which beast? Also hier zu diesem Punkt, der Drache ist welches Tier? The fourth, right? Okay. Das vierte. So, if we're paralleling that, right? Because this two-horned beast consists of all four. That's what we see in Revelation 13, right? It's one kingdom. And the one kingdom consists of Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome. It's, it's all one, right? So this two horned power is one kingdom consisting of four, a progression of four. Phases, thank you. No, not four empires, it's one empire. Also dieses zweihörige Tier ist ein Königreich und um, es besteht aus diesen vier Phasen. Four, four phases. And the four phases is its heart, the heart of that nation being hardened, right? 
Und diese vier Phasen ist eben dieses Herz von der Nation, was immer mehr verhärtet wird. Statue. What does the statue tell us? Und die Statue, was sagt die? Gold, uns? silver, bronze, iron, right? Because. Also sie sagt uns, sie gibt uns dieses Gold, Silber, Bronze und Eisen. So it says in the book of education, the Lord deals with men and nations the same way, right? Und es sagt ja auch im Buch Erziehung, also der Herr, er geht mit Menschen und Nationen in der gleichen Weise um. Okay, so the the nations become harder as they reject the light, right? Also diese Nationen, sie verhärten sich eben, umso mehr Licht sie bekommen. The same as the human heart becomes harder as it rejects the light, right? So wie auch das menschliche Herz immer härter wird, wenn es Licht verwirft. And the Bible specifically uses these phases and when you get to the fourth phase, this is the point that, that is the focus of Bible prophecy, right? Und äh, die Bibel, sie benutzt eben spezifisch diese Phasen und wenn man dann zur vierten Phase kommt, das ist eben dieser ähm, hervorgehobene Punkt in der Bibel. Okay, let's go to Daniel 11, right? Vers 1. Und jetzt gehen wir zu Daniel 11, Vers 1. So, in Okay, it says Also I in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen it. And now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than the all. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. Now, when we first understood this, we took it, we took them based upon literal presidents of the United States from 1989, the time of the end, right? Now, just based upon that fact alone, as students of prophecy, what should we have understood? Und als Studenten der Prophetie, also allein auf diesem, von diesem Fakt her, was hätten wir verstehen müssen? Say that again, Peter. Okay, that's the point. So it's a type, right? Was hast du gesagt, Peter? It's a natural application. Also wir hätten die natürliche Anwendung verstehen müssen. Because we're das ist eine natürliche Anwendung ist. Wir hätten, wir hätten verstehen müssen, dass es eine natürliche Anwendung ist. Right. We're counting literal presidents in a literal sequence, right? Also wir zählen ja buchstäbliche Präsidenten, also in einer buchstäblichen Sequenz. Okay. And it we predicted this beforehand and it came to pass exactly according to the prediction, right? Und wir haben das ja vorhergesagt und das kam dann auch genauso, wie es vorher gesagt wurde. Okay, so, in, it, in verse 2 it says, And now I will show you the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they are. What does it do right here? Und das tut es hier. From the three, right? Also es trennt wieder das vierte von den ersten drei. Das ist exakt das gleiche. Es zeigt uns drei plus das vierte, right? Also es zeigt uns diese drei und die vier. Same as Daniel 7, same as the book of education, right? The fourth is when Christ comes, right? So wie es auch Daniel 7 macht, oder das Buch Erziehung, und das vierte ist eben, wo Christus kommt. But what it does, verse 3, it says, And a mighty king shall stand up, that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven, and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled, for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside. So, this is a parallel to Daniel 8, right? So what it does is it brings you into this history, right? So right here you have the four, so 2016, this prophecy that we read in Daniel 11, literally, following down, Donald Trump was the fourth, and he got elected right here in 2016, right? And exactly according to the prophecy, there's another king's going to stand up and going to bring him down, 
right? Und auch gemäß der Prophetie, der wird ein anderer König aufstehen und ihn herabbringen. Right here, we saw it happen before our very eyes, right? Und das hier geschehen vor unseren Augen. Okay. So, was it wrong for us? <laughs> Prophetically speaking, or, or uh, we, we, uh, I'll show you the mistake in a minute, but was it wrong for us to say, based upon that information, that he was the last president? Also war das falsch, also basierend auf dieser Information, dass wir sag, gesagt haben, er ist der letzte Präsident? N no, based, based, just based upon the prophetic narrative, when you look at all the things, right, the fourth brings you to the second coming, right? Also wenn wir uns dieses vierte in der prophetischen Erzählung anschauen, dann bringt das vierte einen ja immer zum zweiten Kommen. And the fourth brings you to the coming of Christ, when he's going to punish him, right? Und das vierte bringt einen zu diesem Kommen von Christ, wenn er eben bestrafen wird. Okay, but our fault was that we didn't click back then, just like 1989 people were trying to say it's the anti-type, it was just a type, right? Und was wir eben nicht verstanden haben, dass es eben nur ein Typus war. Und 1989 wurde auch gedacht, dass es schon bereits der Antitypus So, Donald Trump was the last president, and he is the last president, but it was just a type, and it's pointing forward to the perfect fulfillment, right? Und Donald Trump ist auch, ja, dieser, dieser letzte Präsident, aber es ist eben nur ein Typus, der eben vorwärts weiß. Because there's people now saying, right, that because... What happened here, what we thought was all false, right? And Trump will not be the last president. They don't believe it anymore, right? Und Menschen sagen nun, wegen dem, was hier passiert ist, also das, was wir gelernt haben, ist falsch. Und Donald Trump ist eben nicht mehr dieser letzte Präsident. Und wird es auch nicht sein. But if you just follow the repeating patterns, right? It was a perfect understanding of the prophecy. The what was not understood was it was just a type, right? Aber wenn man eben diesem folgt, diesem prophetischen Muster, dann um, ist es schon, dass er eben, also ist es schon, dass er der letzte Präsident ist, aber es ist eben nur ein Typus. Okay, go, right, go, let's, this deal. Now I want to look at this third and fourth, right? Und ich möchte, dass wir jetzt dieses dritte und das vierte anschauen. Go to Amos chapter 1. Wir gehen zu Amos 1. Now it mentions this here eight times, right? Und das, ähm, um, er will jetzt hier achtmal. What is eight a symbol of? Und acht ist für was ein Symbol? The birth, right? Für die Geburt. And there's eight punishments here, and the punishments and the birth are when you know God, right? Und hier sind eben acht ja, Bestrafungen, und diese Bestrafung oder das Gericht und die Geburt. Brings you down to this point where the punishments have taken place, wenn right? Wenn du eben Gott kennst. Und das bringt einen zu diesem Punkt, wo eben diese Bestrafungen stattfinden. So, let's look. Amos 1 and verse 3. Amos 1, verse 3. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. So, what does the Lord say he's going to, or what's, what's the principle he wants us to see here? Also, was ist das Prinzip, was uns der Herr zeigen möchte hier? When you get to the third, he's not turning away his punishment. Neither is he turning away his punishment at the fourth, right? Also is he contradicting himself? Wenn man zum dritten und zum vierten kommt, dann wird er eben seine Strafung nicht abwenden. Und ist das jetzt eine, ein Widerspruch? No, he wants us to see the correlation between the third and the fourth, right? Nein, denn er möchte uns eben zeigen, diese Verbindung zwischen dem dritten und dem vierten. These two entities are the ones that are going to be punished, right? Und diese zwei Entitäten sind diejenigen, die bestraft werden. Okay, verse 6. Verse 6. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Eden. Edom. Verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Verse 13. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Right? So he goes through this eight times. Right? Also er geht durch das hindurch achtmal. So eight represents the birth. 
and you've got marked all these nations, which includes because the punishment on Babylon is also the punishment on Jerusalem. And if you look at the last two, it's Judah and Israel. Right, these are these false people of God, right? The destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, everybody follow the point, right? The point is that when you come down to this birth, which is where all these punishments are going to take place. He's going to, it says, <laughs> for three transgressions and for four, right? So, um, when, you, when you look at this, the, the statue, which is a parallel to the four abominations, the third and the fourth is Greece and Rome. Right? Because these transgressions, these four transgressions, are a parallel to these four nations. And if you just go to Exodus chapter 20, I always used to think the Lord sort of contradicting himself, but he wants us to understand the pattern, right? Und ich dachte immer, also der Herr widerspricht sich selbst, aber er möchte eben, dass wir dieses Muster sehen. So, Exodus 20, Vers 4. 2. Mose 20, Vers 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the what? Third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Yet when you go through the prophetic narrative, it's always in the fourth generation that he punishes. But what's he trying to link to the fourth? And when man sich die prophetische Erzählung anschaut, dann ist es ja immer im vierten, wo er bestraft, aber das ist eben verbunden mit diesem vierten. The third. Das dritte. So what I want to understand is that the third and the fourth are going to be punished at the same time. Und das dritte und das vierte wird eben bestraft zur selben Zeit. Biden und Trump, what, what, what's the correlation between the two of them? Also Biden und Trump, was ist die Beziehung zwischen den beiden? They're both leaders of the United States of America, right? They're, also, one, they're one nation, right? Sie sind eine Nation, weil sie sind ja beide Führer von derselben yeah, from, from America. This is about the punishment upon the fourth. The fourth is Rome, which is prefigured by the United States, right? And es geht ja um diese Bestrafung von dem vierten. Das ist eben Rom. Und das stellt eben die USA dar. Right? The third is also Rome. Und das dritte ist auch Rom. In a prophetic sense, right? Also im prophetischen Sinne. Okay, I don't know that I fully understand this, but it definitely trying to link the third and the fourth together, right? Und ich behaupte jetzt nicht, das schon alles richtig zu verstehen, aber definitiv wird dieses dritte und das vierte eben zusammengebracht. Okay, so go to Genesis chapter 15. Jetzt gehen wir zu 1. Mose 15. In Vers 13. In Vers 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And the four hundred years is a parallel to these two things, right? And the four hundred years takes you up to Passover, where they came out of Egypt, right? Und die 400 Jahre, sie bringen einen zu dem pa Passafest, wo sie aus Ägypten herauskamen. Which was a birth. Was auch eine Geburt war. Right? Okay, so let's read on. It says. Lesen weiter. And also that nation whom they serve will I judge. So this brings you in line with Galatians chapter 4, right? Your servants in this time period, right? Until you have the birth and you're set free. Also das ist jetzt eine Übereinstimmung mit Galater 4. Du bist noch ein Knecht bis zu dieser Zeit, wo du dann freigesetzt wirst. Okay. 
It says, That nation whom they serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. But thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation shall they come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So what's it pointing to when this, this judgment takes place? Also when dieses Gericht stattfindet, auf was weiß das? Judgment in the birth is at the fourth, right? Diese Geburt und das Gericht ist ja beim vierten. And it's shown you that at the same time, the third is going to be punished. Und das zeigt uns, zur selben Zeit wird auch das dritte bestraft. Okay. Now, do we understand that the north and the south, which would be the third and the fourth, are both going to get punished here at the end? Und verstehen wir, dass der Norden und der Süden was beide, also das, also was das dritte und vierte ist, dass sie bestraft werden am Ende. I says, do we understand that the that the, um, the north and the south, which prophetically would be the third and the fourth, are going to get punished at the end here? Und verstehen wir auch, dass der Norden und der Süden, was prophetisch eben um, dieses vierte und das dritte ist, bestraft wird am Ende? Yes, right? Okay, so, yeah. verse 16, right? Uh, sorry, sorry, Ezekiel 8 and verse 16. Jetzt gehen wir zu Ezekiel 8, verse 16. It says, And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs towards the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worship the sun toward the east. This is the fourth, right? Also das ist dieses vierte. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. So it's just like on Mount Sinai when they made the golden calf, right? It was the fourth. Right? And Moses says, who's on the Lord's side? And they had to put their swords on and they went from gate to gate and they slew everybody that had committed this abomination, right? Und Mose hat eben gefragt, wer ist auf des Herrn Seite? Und sie mussten eben diese Schwerter aufnehmen und jeden schlagen, eben bis zum Tor, der was dieses Gräuel begangen hat. Right? Okay, so I thought to, to, to bring this this morning because this history that we are going through at the moment, I mean, this is really um, 2014 down to this point here, right? Also diese Geschichte, durch die wir momentan durchgehen, also von 2014 bis zu diesem Punkt, is a history that's going to repeat, right? Das ist ja eine Geschichte, die sich wiederholen wird. And that's the whole point he's bringing us through it, so that we know what's going to come in the future. This is what the book of education tells us, right? Und das ist auch der ganze Zweck, warum wir da durchgehen, damit wir wissen, was in der Zukunft ist. Und das sagt uns auch das Buch Erziehung. So in order to understand the punishment on the third and the fourth, it's going to illustrate it to us here, right? Also um diese Bestrafung des dritten und vierten zu verstehen, zeigt er uns das eben hier auf. But also that because we've we've gone through this now, we will know exactly what's going to come, right? Aber wenn wir dann durch das durchgegangen sind, dann wissen wir auch genau, was eben kommt. Right? Just it's all showing you things on on different fractals, right? Und das zeigt uns immer diese Dinge auf verschiedenen Fraktalen. And uh, just to make sure that everybody understood what you meant with a, a type, in the sense that, um, because the literal presidents, they just typify this last kingdom, right? Yes. Also diese buchstäblichen Präsidenten, sie typifizieren ja das letzte Königreich. Und ich sage das nur, damit alle verstehen, was er meinte, dass sie nur ein Typus sind. Und ich sage das eben jetzt, damit alle verstehen, was Bruno Mark meinte, dass Trump ein Typus ist. Because um, in this last kingdom, literally Trump will rule, but the four kings here in 
they eleven they don't it's three literal kings but they No, it's one kingdom. Kingdom. Yes. And yes. Trump um wird schon als dieser buchstäbliche Präsident eben herrschen am Ende der Welt. Aber das sind dann elf diese vier Könige, die sind eben nicht buchstäblich, sondern geistliche Könige. Also das sind diese vier Tiere. Ultimately, the, the prophecy will be fulfilled by a president of the United States, right? Also diese Prophetie wird auf jeden Fall erfüllt durch einen Präsidenten von der USA. He will be a Republican president. Und es wird ein republikanischer Präsident. We went through all these points and he has to fulfill all the points that are laid out in the Bible that point to who this person is, right? Und er muss eben all diese, diese Punkte oder Charaktereigenschaften eben erfüllen, was eben in der Bibel ausgelegt wird. So one of, one of the arguments is, because he was the type, he can't be the anti-type. Right? But that's, that's, not, that's nonsense, right? So it doesn't matter who the person is, as long as he fulfills all the criteria, right? Also, ja, es geht nicht um die Person, sondern es geht darum, solange er eben diese Kriterien erfüllt. Yes, no, I mean, and he's, he's typifying this, this kingdom, right? Yes. yes. So, but, so in this sense, the antitype is this kingdom, but he will be the one ruling. Yes, the, the Lord has given us all these, this illustration, so we can know what's coming, right? Und der Herr gibt uns ja all diese Illustrationen, damit wir wissen, was kommt. Right, and we can already see that he's well underway the rising back into power, right? Und wir können schon sehen, dass er eben auf dem Weg ist, wieder auf die Macht zu kommen. So, this event right here was a test for us, whether we're really understanding prophecy, and are we going to start to doubt our past experience, when really this was pointing down to this, right? Also das hier war ein... Test für uns, ob wir eben zweifeln an unserer vergangenen Erfahrung und das ist typifiziert ja in Wirklichkeit das hier. Okay, which is also typifying this, right, at the end of the Sunday law. Und das typifiziert auch die Zeit hier am Ende der Sonntagsgesetzkrise. Okay, so it's many things we've got to consider in order to bring all these things together, right? Und das sind eben viele Dinge, die wir in Betracht ziehen, wenn wir diese Dinge zusammenbringen. Right? L lots of things to think about, right? Also viele Dinge zum Nachdenken. Okay, let's close with the okay. Vater, ich will dir danken für dieses Studium und dass du uns zu einem besseren Verständnis dieser Dinge bringst. Und ich möchte bitten, dass in diesem Tag ähm, wir all kannst du nochmal dass du uns hilfst, dass du uns hilfst, dass wir unser ganzes Herz dem Werk weihen, was du für uns vorbereitet hast. Ich möchte beten für deinen Segen an diesem Tag. In Jesu Namen. Amen. Mm -hmm.